Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As I'm recording this video, it's towards the end of the year in year 2022. So I just want to wish everyone a very happy new year and wish you all the best in the brand new year 2023. In today's video, I'm going to show you a very basic data preparation use case. That is, we want to combine a list of files into one file. This is a very common job of uh, data scientists or actually it's for data engineers when your team you don't have a data engineer data scientist or data analyst you have to do the job yourself with this skill set this will be a plus point during interviews when show them your ability to combine files into one because this is one of the skill set required for data analyst or data scientist without further ado let's get started with today's video So in my previous article, I've used API to retrieve stock prices data and convert them into JSON files. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can combine these JSON files into one CSV file. First, we need to know what are the files in our folder. So I would point the file path to this folder and I'm using a relative path here. So you can just copy your path code and paste it, replace with uh, this file path and remember to change the backslash and then now I use a uh, absolute path with the uh, OS library and then I'll use the os.list directory for this file path to list out the files in this folder which has the name of these folders now the next thing I want to do is I want to read these folders and show the data inside these folders so I'm going to write a for loop for files in json folder the json folder is defined here which is a list of file names so in these file names i'm going to loop the elements in the json folder pass the name into the variable files and i'm going to open up the file name with a context manager the path is actually defined here as the file path of my json folder and inside the json folder i'm going to retrieve the file name the files variables is actually every element inside the json folder so it's going to loop the json folder one by one and this files element is going to change for in every single loop and then i'm going to use the read variable and i'm going to pass data loaded into this json object and then i'm going to print out json i forgot to import my json library the data from our api is loaded into this json object so this shows that we are on the right track so i'm going to remove this print object because we don't need to print the data uh, one by one because it just uh, by printing the json object we just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing but we're not going to print this when we are doing our work later on then i'm going to pass the json object time series daily remember that uh, our time series daily is the key for our time series data we only need time series daily and we're going to pass it into a variable called data now we're going to print out data and see how it looks like and you know what instead of printing in the loop itself i'm going to print outside of the loop so that i can just print the last data this is uh, actually we want to just look at just one instead of combining all of them into one place and another reason is i don't want to uh, use too much of computing power of my laptop now you see that this data contains the date as a key of a list and it contains the daily data of that respective date so i'm going to remove this printing and then i'm going to convert this data into a data frame in my previous video i've shown you how we can use this from dictionary and convert it into a pandas data frame and then i'll pass it into a df variable and i'm going to rename the axis into date and then I'll push the index of the date into the df underscore date. So as I run this code and I'm going to print out df underscore date, I forgot to import my pandas library. 
And this code is actually converting the data into this CF underscore date data frame. To help you to imagine this, uh, this code is trying to convert the data into a data frame. But when I bring just the DF, my date column is in the index itself. So I'm going to use this rename axis, rename this into date. And then I'm going to use the reset index to push this into a column. So the DF date you have a date column and a reset index will help us to reset the index over here and then i'm going to add column to show the stocks ticker uh, pay attention to this code df underscore date ticker equals to files colon four i'm going to create a new cell paste this code into a new cell to see what i'm actually trying to do over there when I run this code, it's actually trying to print my ticker symbol. Where, the, where does this uh, ticker symbol come from? It's actually from the JSON folder. You notice that uh, JSON folder is a list, and the uh, elements in this list will tell you this ticker symbol. And after the ticker symbol, it's going to have a stock prices.json. So what I'm trying to do here is I, I'm treating this one element as a string. And in Python, a string is, can, you can subset a string into a list of objects. I'm going to take the first five elements. And if you know Python, you know that the, in, in a list, this number, uh, you have to minus one. So it's actually from 0 to 3, and 0, 1, 2, 3 is actually 4 elements in that string. So I'm going to take the first 4 elements of the string in every single element of this list. So it's going to look through my file names, and for each file names, it's going to take just the first 4 letters. And this is basically what it means. And I'm going to pass these first 4 letters into the column called ticker so i've created a new column over here called ticker this ticker will go, is going to store the ticker symbol of all the boundings and then i need to combine the df date into one so what i'm trying to do here is you see that this reading from json file convert into data frame and add a column for the stock sticker is actually replacing each other after every loop. So I need to store this DF date somewhere before we went into the next loop. So in this DF date, I'm going to combine with DF underscore all to store in a DF underscore all variable. And in the next loop, this DF date is going to be replaced with the new files, but this DF underscore all will not be replaced with a new file. And this will actually create a uh, append situation for my df underscore all. But I need to first define df underscore all as an empty data frame. So I'm going to create a new cell to show you what this code does. When I read under df underscore all, it's going to give me an empty data frame. And when I print out the type of this thing, it's actually a data frame. All right. So we created a, a blank data frame and this data frame is empty for the first loop but when it starts to loop over this code then this will combine an empty data frame with the our first file data. Alright, so empty plus first data we get the first data. Now we look through the loop for a second time. This df underscore all is not empty anymore. It's going to contain the data in the first file and df date is going to contain the data in the second file. So the df all here is going to store the data for both first and second files. All right. And this continues for the third, fourth, and fifth loop until the end of the file, uh, files until the last files of that folder and it will at the end of the loop it's going to give us all of the 
files in the JSON folders. So to check that, I'm going to show the df underscore all for the ticker column and I'm going to show the unique values in that column. So this is going to show us all the ticker symbols that or all the files in our JSON folders. So now we have our df underscore all that stores all the files in our JSON folder. We want to output our df underscore all to a CSV file. So I'm going to reset the index. Pay attention to the index. Although we have 30,653 rows, but you see that the last index is actually 3,142. This is because when we try to append the tables, the index doesn't reset after the concatenation. So after all of the concatenations, we need to reset the index and drop the old index. We are going to use dfout dot to csv to output into the file path uh, for my output path i created a folder in the same folder i store my code this output file is going to store my csv file this is actually the code for this python code so i'm going to use that as an output path and then i'm going to rename this as a combined data.csv and set the index to force as I run the code this is going to output my cc file into this folder that's all for my tutorial today i hope you learned something from this video if you have any questions kindly leave your comments down below and if you haven't already subscribed to my youtube channel if you'd like to have a uh, written instructions for this video you can head over to my medium i'll paste a link in the description down below you can click on the medium link to come over to this medium article page to read the step-by-step -step description of the code in my medium so that's all for today's video i hope you spend your Christmas holiday and New Year holiday well. Wish you Merry Christmas and Happy New Year once again. I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.